The Division 2's second DLC or episode is releasing this week for Year 1 pass holders, bringing with it new main missions, new weapons, a brand new specialization, and even a new PvP mode. I've been able to get hands on with it early, and I wanted to give you a rundown of what you can expect from this new content drop. If you've got the Year 1 pass, you can play it all on October 15th, but for everyone else, it will drop on the 22nd. This content drop is called Pentagon The Last Castle. So as you might expect, the missions are centered in and around the actual Pentagon. At the beginning of episode two, players receive a transmission from a fellow agent who's scouting a large black tusk operation at that location. The core of the main mission center around finding out exactly what black tusk is doing at the Pentagon and of course taking back control. And I've got some footage I recorded here in the background of those early missions, but I've tried not to show too much or show up any cutscenes, so you can experience this as spoiler free as possible if you do play it yourself. I did enjoy what I played though, and as with any Division 2 content, areas always look incredibly detailed and interesting. And the giant drone that you fight in one mission, well, that's just cool. It's not an easy thing to take down, but it's a really epic fight. Other than that, the bosses, if you want to call them that, were pretty standard in the missions I played, but there is another mission that I've not played yet too. In total, there are two main story missions and one intro mission. So in the grand scheme of things, it's not going to take you a huge amount of time to complete this, but they are at least interesting and engaging, in my opinion. There are also new classified assignments that are exclusive to year one pass holders. Classified assignments were added into the game this year around the same time as the raid, and these are much shorter missions than the standard story or side missions, and they've got four audio logs and a backpack trophy to find. There are two of these classified assignments in this patch. In the embassy assignment, a JTF helicopter has been shot down by the outcasts and it's crashed through the roof of the Mexican embassy. And as an agent, you are then tasked with locating the helicopter to rescue the pilot. Lots of fun. The second mission is in the marina where outcasts have been moving weapons and supplies into a boathouse on the Potomac River. As well as the new missions, there's also a brand new specialization, the technician. And he is described as a support agent who can boost his skills and the ones from the other agents with his special variant of the hive. And he features a multi-missile launcher signature weapon. And this is a powerful weapon that can bring control to situations through a rather explosive manner. And adding to that, it's a lot of fun to use. His signature weapon is called the P017 launcher and it can release up to six missiles on enemy targets. So I found it really useful for just taking out robots or the sniper dogs, which can be quite frustrating to fight at times. You can just ADS to lock on and then let the tracking missiles do their work. And he comes with the Maxim 9 sidearm and an EMP grenade. This new specialization means that there are now five in the game in total. The original three are the sharpshooter, demolitionist, survivalist, and then gunner was added earlier in the year and now the technician. If you've got the year one pass, then the technician is unlocked instantly for you to play with. Otherwise, you need to take on special field research to unlock it. Five stages of in-game challenges, each with their own set of objectives and rewards. There are also new items with this update, including some new exotic knee pads oh, and an exotic shotgun. The knee pads are called Sawyer's knee pads and they're all about disrupting and jamming technology. If you're fighting Black Tusk or if you're fighting other SHD and Rogue agents, these will allow you to nullify their tech-based gear. Quite useful. The shotgun on the other hand is called the KSG shotgun and it's also an exotic. It packs a real punch and I used it quite a bit to good effect. I'm not much of a shotgun person when it comes to the division though. I tend to run with either an auto weapon, so an assault rifle, SMG or LMG, and then a sniper. But if you are a big shotgun fan, then this gun will definitely pack a punch and do it for you. It's not just two exotic items though. This update brings with it 38 new branded gear pieces, making sure that all brands have each of the six gear pieces. Ubisoft really wanted to make sure that the players have more options when it comes to build diversity. And named items have been overhauled too. To ensure that named items are more rewarding and powerful for players, named items now have a specific perfect talent tied to them. It also sees the introduction of new weapons as well as named gear. In title update five, the game added expeditions. And these missions offered unique challenges and lore not found anywhere else in the game. And they are free events that bring players to unexplored locations around DC. These are also returning with the new update, including Expedition Mastery. And with this update, all investigation areas will be open at the same time for the first two weeks of the update's release. 
the frequency of these expeditions is also going to be increased with it returning on November the 12th, two weeks after it closing. It will then follow a two weeks down, one week up cadence for the foreseeable future. And this means that players can hop into the expeditions each time they open up to acquire the mastery rewards and guarantee access to the elusive Diamondback, which is an exotic rifle. So the mastery system adds a new difficulty and challenge system to Kenley College. For each difficulty on each branch, there are three medals to be earned, bronze, silver, and of course, gold. These are based on completion times. Also, when completing mastery medals, an additional modifier is active, and that modifier is called dead drop, which means that enemies will drop different types of live grenades when they die. It's a way of adding a new layer of difficulty to the regular expedition missions and quite explosive. So if you're a lover of PvP in The Division, you haven't been left out either. There have been some big quality of life improvements to Conflict. You can now select your loadout during map voting. There's improved bonus armor visualization and a rework of the rewards, meaning players now get rewarded regardless of if they won or lost the map. There's also a brand new map called Wharf, and this takes place in an abandoned fishing harbour. Team Elimination is the third game mode of conflict taking place over seven rounds, and it's essentially team deathmatch, but permadeath each round, and that encourages players to try and work together. There's been a large amount of improvements to the overall game experience here too. One of those improvements is the targeted loot system, and this is a huge overhaul of the gear system, making it way easier for the player to make decisions on what loot that they want to go for. This feature becomes available at World Tier 5, and it gives players the ability to focus in on finding a specific type of gear as improved drop chances are offered across select activities and areas of the world. Crafting and recalibration were reworked too, and this means that enemies are going to drop more crafting materials, lowering crafting costs, and a new recalibration interface. The whole system should be better and more appealing to use. There have been improvements to the inventory management too, making it easier to navigate the menus, and the stash base has been increased, giving players as many as 300 slots now. To be fair, this update has a huge amount of improvements to not only the core gameplay, but also just general quality of life improvements. It seems as though Ubisoft and Massive are listening to player feedback as a lot of these improvements are based on community posts and feedback. There is one piece of bad news though for Division 2 players. The second raid has sadly been delayed. Initially, it was due to release with this content drop, but the second raid has now been pushed back into 2020. And a press release from Ubisoft said that the additional time allows the dev team to focus on the overall quality of the Division 2 while developing a raid that will better meet the standards of its players. It's unfortunate, especially for players looking to gear up and give it a go, as the first raid seemed to be quite popular. But if it needs some extra dev time to be polished, and a better experience, realistically, it's probably for the best. So wrapping things up, I hadn't played The Division 2 for a little while, but Ubisoft invited me to take part in this, and I have to say I really enjoyed the time that I spent with The Last Castle. It seems as though there's been a lot of time and effort put into the overall player experience, and hopefully that shines through for the players who jump into The Division 2 every day. If you still haven't experienced the game though, there is a free weekend coming up soon, so that should give you a good opportunity to jump in and see if the game is for you. And that's all for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this one. Do let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you did like it, leave a like. If you didn't, a dislike. Subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one. Pentagon systems are giving our techs hell. Okay, there's an air gap server in Hawaii. It has a complete inventory of projects and assets based at the Pentagon. We'll need that project list.